Here's a solid mechanics problem which looks at finding the bending moment as a function of distance for, well, in this case, a simply supported beam. And this is the type of problem that you might encounter as a first year engineering student doing solid mechanics. And for some people, it depends. You might do this in the first year or you might do this in the second year. And if you're doing something like civil engineering or aerospace engineering or mechanical engineering, you will most likely at some point in your degree see something like this. And the reason why finding the bending moment using Macaulay's method is relevant is because this is the first step towards finding the beam deflection at any point along the beam's length. Now, if you'd like to see anything similar to this on the channel, let me know in the comments. So what I'll do here is I will follow the regular procedure in terms of finding this moment as a function of the distance x. Now, the first thing I recommend you try and do is find the reaction forces. But in this case, the question was nice enough to actually tell us what the reaction forces are at uh, B and D. So we have two supports. One is a simple support, the other one is a roller support, and we don't have any horizontal forces at all, which means that the only two reactions are going to be the vertical reactions of 30 kN and 20 kN. So, to find the general expression for the bending moment using those uh, sharp brackets, we're going to try and find the bending moment before the end of the beam, which is going to be somewhere here. Okay, so I'm going to redraw the beam and I'm going to use this picture to uh, to guide myself. So we're going to have end A, so that's on the left. And at end A we have two things happening. So we have this force of 5 kilonewtons pointing downwards. We also have this external moment, right? This is not an internal bending moment. This is an external uh, moment, which is applied to that end of the beam of 10 kilonewton meters. And then we've got point B right here. We've got point C here, let's say. And then I'm going to say that the reaction at D is going to be right here. So this is uh, RD. I'm just going to call it RD instead of RDY because there's no RDX. So that's going to be 20 kilonewtons. And what else do we have? So we have at RB, we've got another vertical reaction force of 30 kilonewtons. Like that. And then at point C, we have two things happening actually. So at point C here, we have a point load of 10 kilonewtons. We've got another external moment of 20 kilonewton meters. And between points B and C, we've got the distributed load of 7.5 kilonewtons per meter. So that's a uniformly distributed load like that. So that's 7.5 kilonewton per meter, not kilonewton meters, because that would be a moment. Okay. And that's RD. And then we don't care about point E because we took our cross section somewhere here like this. So on this side, on the right hand side of that beam, we have two things which are uh, happening. We have a shear force and we have let's use this for the bending moment so this is m as a function of x now this moment would obviously only work if we look at uh, this section of the beam from d to e right and then we're going to use macaulay's method to generalize that expression of the bending moment so that it's applicable for every point along the beam. Right, so let's try to come up with an expression for mx between d and e for now. So let's apply 
the uh, principles be behind the Macaulay's method in order to be able to use this. So the first thing you should do is look out for any distributed loads. And in this case, we've got this here of 7.5, which is not actually going towards the end of the beam. So we're going to use that trick. And if we use that trick, we're going to extend that distributed load all the way to the end. And to counteract that, we have to apply an equal distributed load on the bottom, like this. So that's 7.5 kilonewton meters. And let's actually draw some distances as well. So this is 2 meters. This is 4 meters. It's not really to scale, but it doesn't really uh, matter. This is 2 meters. And the whole thing from one end to another, that's going to be X meters. Right? That's my arbitrary distance X, which means that this tiny bit here, right, that's going to be X minus 8. So let's take moments about let's take moments about this point uh, that we call p, and we have that the sum of moments about point p has to be equal to zero because this is an equilibrium situation. So let's say let's say that we want to uh, start by looking at the moments acting on the left. So we have uh, this right here, which is acting clockwise. So that's going to be minus ten. Then we have this, the moment you do this 5 kilonewtons force, so that's acting counterclockwise. So that would be plus 5 multiplied by the moment arm, which is x. Then we've got this, uh, this reaction force of 30 kilonewtons. So that produces a clockwise moment about point P, so that's going to be minus 30 multiplied by x minus 2. So that's the moment arm for RB. Then let's look at let's let's first do all the point loads and then we'll look at the distributed load separately. Then we have this 10 kilonewton force acting at six meters from the left, and this is acting well, this is creating a moment about point P which is counterclockwise. So that's going to be plus 10 multiplied by x minus 6. And then we've got this other reaction force, which is producing a clockwise moment about point P. So that's going to be minus 20 times x minus 8. Right, so those are the moments due to all the, um, all, all the point loads. So now let's look at the two d distributed loads, essentially. So we have one along the top and one along the bottom. So the one along the top that's going to produce a moment which is counterclockwise. So that's going to be plus the distributed load, which is 7.5, multiplied by the force, well, multiplied by the distance in order to, to get a force, which is x minus 2. Right, so this distributed load is acting from here to here, and that distance, if you look at the geometry, it's x minus 2. And the moment arm is x minus 2 over 2. So that's x minus 2 over 2. It's a bit cramped, but you get the idea. And then we do the same thing with the distributed load on the bottom. So that's going to produce a clockwise moment. So that's going to be minus. Maybe I should do this. Kind of separate things. So minus the distributed load on the bottom uh, has a value of 7.5. It's acting over a distance of x minus 6. And the moment arm is x minus 6 over 2. Right? And we're almost done. We also have this, uh, this moment here, which is, uh, according to the convention, is counterclockwise. So it's plus mx equals 0. So that's, that's a pretty long expression. Uh, so let's try to get the mx, the moment, out of this. So to get mx, it's already positive. So essentially, you put everything else on the other side. Um, and I think I forgot something, which is this 20 kilonewton meter um, moment. So we have a moment which is minus 10 at the beginning. We have this one, which is uh, plus 20. So we're going to start with uh, plus 20. Now, we're not going to add the 2 together. We're not going to 20 minus 10 because we will keep them as, as they are to apply Macaulay's method uh, later. So, 
if you put everything on the other side everything should should swap their sign from minus to plus or vice versa so we've got 10 and then minus 20 so i start with the two moments right so we have this one which is minus 10 this one which is 20 but i put them on the other side so they switch sign and then we have minus 5x and then plus 30 times x minus 2 and then minus 10 x minus 6 and then plus 20 x minus 8 so plus 20 times x minus 8 and then we have the two distributed loads so we have minus 7.5 and then x minus 2 squared over 2 and then finally we have plus 7.5 and that's this should be x minus 8 x minus 6 uh, squared over 2 so x minus 6 squared over 2 and that's it now keep in mind this is the moment acting on the beam between points d and e so if you want to find a generalized form of the bending moment for any point on the beam we're going to rewrite this in a slightly different way without changing anything yet so the moment can also be written as follows uh, 10 times so this 10 is the moment acting at the beginning so that's going to be x minus 0 to the power 0 which is 1 so nothing really changes but the reason i wrote it like this is to prepare for applying macaulay's method in a bit so the x minus zero the zero basically tells you that the position of this moment is at x equals zero so if we do the same thing with the other one with the 20 so 20 happens at um six meters basically so that's going to be x minus six to the power zero okay and then we write the, the rest of it as minus five times and this is x minus zero to the power one right because this is 5x and 5x is referring to this force which is acting at x equals zero and then we've got 30 plus 30 times x minus 2 so that's already x minus something minus 10 times x minus 6 plus 20 x minus 8 minus 7.5 x minus 2 squared over 2 plus 7.5 x minus 6 squared over 2 so there's one more one more thing to do which is to replace all the regular brackets with the sharp brackets and if you do that you're going to end up with a moment expression which is valid for every position along the beam so i'm literally just rewriting everything above but i'm replacing the brackets so we have x minus 2 and then minus 10 times x minus 6 plus 20 x minus 8 minus 7.5 x minus 2 squared over 2 and finally plus 7.5 that's a really long expression x minus 6 squared over 2 and instead of saying that this is equal to m we're gonna replace this by e times i times v double dash right because the moment and this thing the young's modules times the second moment of area times the second derivative of the deflection um you know those two are equal to each other and from here onwards you would integrate this twice and find the deflection wherever you want now keep in mind that for this problem you have to be aware of the boundary conditions so when you integrate this twice you're going to end up with two constants which are typically called c1 and c2 and the boundary conditions in this case are as follows so the boundary condition at point b which is the boundary condition at 2 um, is that the deflection at 2 is equal to 0 and also the deflection at this point d which is the deflection at 8 uh, is also equal to 0 so 
if you apply the boundary conditions in this way, you'll actually, unfortunately, um, get C1 and C2 values different from zero. So you're going to end up with a relatively complicated expression if you actually want to go all the way and find the deflection at any given point. But the purpose of this problem was just to give you a bit of practice in terms of writing and applying Macaulay's method for a beam with all sorts of point loads and distributed loads and point moments acting on it. And that's the end of the question.